Okay, so I guess we're going to go ahead and start now. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, the second seminar of the ICE TVS 2024 digital event series. Um, just as a tradition, we're going to ask everybody to put in where they're from and their affiliation. You might find an old buddy. We are a tight community. So go ahead and share that in the chat. I'm here to introduce our host for today, Dr. Lutz Richard. He is the first vice president of ICE TBS. He works for large space structures from Germany. I'm sure everybody knows him, and he's our expert in rover modeling. So let it, I'm going to give the stage to Dr. Lutz. I hope everybody enjoys. Thanks a lot, Varsha. And uh, we've been relying a lot on your support and that of your colleagues uh, from Virginia Tech uh, to make this happen, uh, our DES series. So thanks a lot for that at this point. Um, right, before we would give the floor uh, to Powell today for his talk, uh, I would like to invite um, Professor Yamakawa from Japan to give us a uh, short briefing on this year's ISTVS conference uh, that we're going to be holding in Japan, in Yokohama, in October. And uh, Professor uh, Yamakawa is, is on the line uh, and he's ready to speak to us and uh, just uh, talk about basically the, the call for papers that has been open now um, and a few other announcements on our upcoming face-to-face -face conference later this year. junior san please go ahead. Okay. Thank you for your introduction. So I'd like to share my slides for um, okay. Uh, thank, thank you for your time. I'd like to uh, give you some uh, short uh, introduction to ISTVS 2024. Uh, 21st International and 12th Asia Pacific Regional Conference, Yokohama, Minato Mirai, Japan, uh, held in October 28th through 31st this year. Uh, I'd like to briefly update information uh, this conference. Uh, it says uh, Minato Mirai in the middle of the uh, lines uh, here that this Japanese word Minato means port or harbor and Mirai means future. In other words, Minato Mirai means future port or port of the future. So these are pictures of Yokohama landscape. The top right photo is a view of the Yokohama Minato Mirai uh, area and on the left uh, the um, a sightseeing boat pier. The photo below right shows uh, Nippon Maru. Uh, this is the monument of the y Yokohama Minato Mirai uh, sailing ship that is the symbol. The lower center photo is famous uh, Yokohama Chinatown. The lower left photo shows the Japanese traditional uh, Japanese garden. Uh, Yokohama is the second largest city in Japan by population and the most populous local government of Japan. Uh, it is the capital city and the most popular city in Kanagawa Prefecture with a 2023 uh, population of 3.8 million. It lies on Tokyo Bay, south of Tokyo, in the Kanto region of the main island of Honshu. Yokohama is also the major economic, cultural, and commercial hub of the greater Tokyo area along the Keihin Industrial Zone. Uh, on the right, this is the Japan Islands. Yokohama is located in the center of Honshu main island, south of Tokyo. On the left, 
Here is an access map to Yokohama Station. Uh, we have two international airports which have easy access to Yokohama. Uh, if you use Haneda International Airport, it takes 23 minutes to Yokohama Station by KQ Line. Uh, this is the easiest way to come to Yokohama Station. Another international airport, Narita, it takes about 90 minutes to Yokohama Station by a JR Express train. Uh, here's a call for participants. Um, researchers of science in the field of mechanical engineering, vehicles and machines, mechatronics and automation, soil science, agriculture, and environmental engineering, as well as professional from industry, business, and government agencies are invited to participate. The participants of students from under and graduate courses are also welcomed. The conference topics are as follows. The soil mechanical characterization, off-road mobility modeling, soil compaction, uh, driving systems of off-road vehicles and machines, innovative concepts of tires, wheels, and trucks, propulsion system and the engines, electronics, autonomous and robotic systems, met metrology and telemechanics. Uh, here are the key dates for the conference. Um, the submission Abstract submission has already started from February 15th. March 15th, abstract submission closes. May 31st is a deadline for full paper submission. After peer review, final paper submission is July 31st. Uh, registration starts at June, June 10th. Only about registration closes at the end of July. Preliminary program will be published in July. October 28th through 31st is the International and Asia Pacific Regional Conference. Uh, here's program outline. The day one, Monday, 28th October, registration, board of director meeting in the afternoon, icebreaker party in the evening. Uh, Tuesday, 29 October, uh, registration, opening ceremony, uh, St. Christopher lecture, keynote speech, uh, which is uh, the speaker is currently under uh, selection. Parallel sessions, banquet in the evening. The day third, Wednesday, 30th, uh, parallel sessions, poster session. Uh, presenters may uh, choose either oral or a poster presentation. And closing ceremony, Thursday, uh, uh, we plan to take you to the technical tour, but the destination is under consideration. Uh, here's a conference venue. Uh, conference is held in Upper Hotel and Resort Yokohama Bay Tower. Uh, this picture is the Yokohama Minato Mirai area, future port area. Uh, this is the hotel building where the conference will be held. Here are some pictures of the hotel entrance and the conference hall. Uh, this is a very nice place. If you book a room on the harbor side, you will have a nice view from your room. Uh, the bottom left is a photos of guest room. You can enjoy delicious Japanese food in the middle bottom. On the right, you can also try a Japanese style public bath. You must bathe without the bathing suit. Okay. Uh, this is sightseeing map. Uh, the conference venue is in the center. 
There are many attractive places within walking distance. The subway or underground, JR train, and buses are also available. There is uh, plenty of public transportation, so you can enjoy sightseeing as well as the conference. Okay. So, see you in Yokohama, Japan in October. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for these uh, remarks. Thank you very much. Also, considering that uh, you were able, uh, Yamakawa-san, to uh, speak to us uh, in real time from Japan, and it's eight eight hours uh, later from Central European time, where I am based. So it's like ten fifteen in the evening, right? Yes. Very good. Um, Yes, so everybody attending, please seriously consider contributing to the conference by submitting an abstract or submitting two abstracts um, uh, by yourself, your collaborators. Uh, please visit the website and uh, we hope to see you there. Yep. Uh, yes, Varsha was able to respond to some questions in the chat regarding the conference, like abstract deadline. Yes. Um, yeah. So normally the deadline would be about a week from now. So next Friday. Uh, very good. Do we have some real uh, some uh, further questions by the audience on the plant Yokohama meeting? If so, please put it in the chat. And we can get to those uh, then immediately. Right, with that, I would say thanks for the overview, for the advertisement, uh, Yamakawa-san. And uh, yeah. enjoy the evening. Yes, thank and you. we speak soon. Feel free, of course, to stay on the line for the webinar, for the presentation. Yes. Okay. And, uh, uh, a lot of hellos to the colleagues in Japan. Okay. Right. So as for today's uh, speaker, um, uh, it's Paweł Tomio from uh, Poland, from uh, Lublin uh, Institute of Technology. And uh, Paweł got his uh, PhD last year. Uh, and he's now an uh, assistant professor in the Department of Quantitative Methods in Management. Uh, so interesting move from engineering slash robotics uh, to the management domain, but I guess some of the methods uh, may be similar. Um, so uh, Powell, um, you're going to speak to us about the concept of a hybrid uh, locomotion system uh, with possible applications on the moon. And hybrid meaning uh, the mobility system concept would be a, a mixture, a blend of uh, wheeled and uh, legged uh, locomotion, which uh, promises to be very capable and performant uh, in rough terrain. And uh, Pablo, with that, I guess we give you the floor and uh, okay. we're okay, foreseeing something like half an hour for your presentation. And any questions by the audience, uh, please, everybody, uh, put your uh, questions and comments in the chat and we will be addressing them, some of them in real time and some then in the Q&A portion of uh, this event, which we will have right after the, the talk itself. Power. Okay, so uh, good evening and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Pavel Tomiwo, I, and I'm working at the Lublin University of Technology. Today, I will talk about a concept of hybrid locomotion lunar rover. So let's begin. I divide my presentation into four main um, introduction, rover design, concept and research plan, and of course, uh, favor work. <clears throat> so, uh, 
So, the presentation describes the concept of a rover with hybrid locomotion, uh, which uh, combines a solution from wheeled rovers and walking rovers. First, let's consider the advantages and disadvantages of wheeled rovers and walking rovers and some sample rover designs. So, wheeled rovers move much faster than the walking rovers and the movement mechanism itself is much simpler. Rovers of this type are characterized by stability on even a smooth surface. However, they also have their drawbacks. In difficult terrain, wheel geometry is an important aspect, but it might turn out to be insufficient depending on the type of the surface. <clears throat> so, the complicated lunar landscape with uh, its uneven craters, stones, shifting slopes, unevenly granular soft soil is the most difficult challenge to overcome because traditional wheels lack the traction necessary to pull the rover uh, through the soft soil, they are unable to properly function in such an environment. For this reason, many rover solutions have been developed to optimize the geometry of rover wheels. Wheels used with uh, planetary rovers must be adapted to prevailing conditions. For this reason, many solutions have been developed that uses a variety of wheel geometries or additional mechanisms. For example, at the feature one, we can see variable diameter wheel, which can change its, which, uh, this type of wheel can dynamically change its uh, diameter to overcome some obstacles at the surface of the moon. We can also see <coughs> different uh, designs of the wheel. <coughs> so, working rover might be able to navigate difficult terrain due to the motion mechanism used. Rover of this type have the ability to adapt to different types of terrain. In the case of Ancelo Grand, these types of rover might exhibit greater stability than the wheeled rovers. Disadvantages of this uh, type include um, complexity of the design and a slower movement because it's actually need to maintain the stability and use some uh, other techniques to move properly. And the use of additional mechanisms and appropriate data processing units is associated with higher energy consumption. <coughs> so researchers have developed many rovers prototypes that use various types of locomotion system, and we can list among them such as walking rovers, walking rovers with wheels, a various type of uh, wheel rover with improved wheel geometry and uh, hovering the weight distribution, <coughs> and uh, Transforming rover using eccentric wheel motion. At the figure four, you can see a legged robot that uh, that legs are ended with uh, wheels, and this type of robot can actually crawl using uh, these uh, six legs. There are also a four-legged rover and rover with a different design, as we can see at figure six. And what's interesting is the rover at figure seven, which is actually a transforming robot with eccentric uh, wheel motion. So the advantages and disadvantages of walking and wheeled rovers uh, outlined previously support the idea of developing a robot with a hybrid locomotion system that takes advantages of both solutions. An additional improvement in my case is that the rover's mode of locomotion will be a crawling mechanism. So let's overview a concept and research uh, plan. The research plan was divided into three main parts, mechanical design, electronic design, and the use of um, AI algorithms. The first step in uh, designing the rover was to analyze scientific publications and av available solutions. This was followed by the rover concept and preliminary design. A prototype was uh, also um, developed, and um, the next step, <clears throat> prototype actually used a bare minimum of electronics and use a predefined principles of the movement, so it can actually test if the mechanical design can work um, properly. Uh, <clears throat> at base of, the, of this test, I'm going to uh, improve the design and redo the whole procedure. <clears throat> um, in, the in the later parts, after a mechanical design, I'm going to 
um, focus on uh, electronic design. So I improve the electronic parts, maybe some uh, additional sensors, and so I will test the whole um, uh, whole robot uh, prototype. And the last step after uh, making a proper design of uh, mechanical uh, parts, the electronic system <coughs> is the use of the AI. Uh, AI will be used mostly to optimize the motion by using a machine learning algorithm. So as you can see at the figure nine, there is a concept of the rover design. Uh, first, let's define some uh, nomenclature for the rover component. As you can see, there are three main uh, elements, an arm, forearm, and crawling mechanism. So the rover actually have uh, the two limbs consisted of an arm. The arms are used, uh, are moved uh, using a servo mechanism, and the, both arms are ended with the wheels. In addition, the rover has a tail, which is responsible for maintaining stability. Uh, now let's focus on the design of the <coughs> limb. The limb is designed so that the default mode the wheel is under the point which is the center of the rotation of the arm. So in default mode, it's actually look like this. If we rotate this part, we actually have our wheel under this center. In additional, a sharp elbow was used at the end of the arm to increase the ability to crawl up a steep slope. As this um, elbow, I mean uh, actually this part, Uh, the crawling mechanism has been designed so that it's inactive state. Uh, so this is uh, this state is inactive. Uh, it, is, it does not affect the rover driving capabilities. The blade of the crawling mechanism in this active state extend and lock on this support plate. So the force uh, generated by the soil doesn't actually snap a surface because it. Uh, it's a, it's a, a small servo, so it has uh, less power than the servos used for moving the arm. <clears throat> the combination of the two movement mechanics allows the robot to traverse difficult terrains such as step slopes and muddy areas through the use of a crawling mechanics. In addition, the rover is able to move quickly over parabolized terrain with the use of the wheels. Figure 9 shows the basic assumption of the rover's predefined uh, motion. Uh, in the initial state, uh, the rover moves one uh, limb and then uh, order to move to the crawling position. Uh, and then blades are extended, so followed by the movement of the forearms, which uh, cause the blade to dig into the soil. After dig uh, digging into the soil, the rover pulls itself up. Now I will show a short uh, video of uh, first prototype, and uh, I would like to mention that the rover is uh, most of the parts of the rover are uh, 3D printed. So let's see how does it work. So uh, the test was actually on a flat uh, surface, so. Uh, and the later test will use uh, some kind of slope to determine if it's working. But the main uh, part of this test was to check if crawling mechanism actually works. Uh, Pavel, Lucia, very briefly, could you play it again a couple of times, perhaps? Because yeah, the video is uh, quite, quite brief, so we have a chance to see it. Okay. And this is actually end. I will play it again. So uh, it was actually a first try of the crawling motion, and there is uh, some kind of limitation, but I will discuss it later. <clears throat> so 
uh, due to the robot design that uh, used and the use of a servo sweep, uh, 180 degree angle of rotation for the movement, uh, restarting the crawling, so the uh, changing position from crawl to uh, wheel position uh, involves pushing the rover back. So there is uh, some kind of limitation. Due to this kind of the issue, a possible solution to the problem is to change the base position uh, during crawling to the one shown in uh, figure uh, 12B. So the for now default position is actually uh, 12A. So I think if we try to change it like uh, it's show at the figure 12B, it, it actually it, the rover can overcome this limitation, but I will I won't uh, check it right now, but I will check it in the future. And I think this will allow the limbs to move in such a way that the rover is not push, pushed uh, backward when a uh, crawling motion is, um, let's say, restarted. So for the current research status, mm, the things I have done is the first prototype of the rover was designed and built. And a testbed was uh, created using a silica sand as a substrate. The most important thing to do is uh, to make a row a climbing mechanism is that the rover with a climbing mechanism will be tested on a slope of different angles. And based on the test, different types of traffic movement will be tested to determine the optimal solution. And of course, a uh, limitation is improvements. <clears throat> So in the current state, the rover limbs are moved by servo with a maximum degree of uh, from zero to 180 degrees. This is a kind of limitation that makes it difficult to return the arm to base position. And the robbery will, uh, which is responsible for maintaining balance, is not driven. So using a driven wheel can be beneficial because um, this will allow the wheel to be anchored by some kind of dynamic thinking or maybe a crawling motion support. So when the rover starts to crawl, driving the wheel maybe could help the crawling motion. And then uh, improvement is the selecting the proper wheel geometry because a frontal wheel for now I actually um, only a decoration. And uh, of course, the crawling motion needs some improvement. <clears throat> now I will outline the uh, future works. So let's start uh, with sensors I plan to add to the rover. I'm planning to add, of course, an uh, internal measurement unit and sets of uh, two RGB cameras on depth cameras that will allow the robot to get uh, the geometry of the environment. I will discuss some uh, use case later. And the IEMU system can be used to estimate special orientation and to detect a rover sudden slide down a slope. Uh, this uh, detection of sudden uh, uh, slide down a slope I will also discuss later. And the servo can also be used to maintain proper balance when moving over an uneven surface. Of course, I'm going to use uh, artificial neural network models. And these models, uh, maybe I will briefly introduce the principles of artificial neural networks and their possible use. So let's start with this principle. I will demonstrate the principle of neural network using a simple multilayer perceptron architecture as an example. So at the beginning, weights are randomly assigned for each neuron. In the learning process, the network uh, predictions are compared, compared with uh, the true values. So, of course, in the case of uh, supervised learning. And later, the loss function determines how much the model has gone wrong. The models decide, uh, the optimizer decides uh, how much to change the weight in the model. So, actually, it's work like uh, uh, Mm, in the manner of trial and errors to make the best uh, outcome. So the uh, main algorithm that will be used to mm, support decision process of the 
robot auto is based on uh, artificial neural networks and reinforcement learning. And I'm gonna use it mostly on a uh, segmentation of specific elements of an image, detection uh, of uh, key points, and supporting depth perception by two RGB cameras. <coughs> uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, in the future plans on the rover, I also intend to use um, reinforcement learning. And uh, reinforcement learning is a type of uh, artificial intelligence uh, algorithm that allows the agent, in our case, the ro rover, to adapt to solve a given task in the environment. The method itself mimics human, human uh, cognitive ability. So, the agent has a defined decision making pro, uh, making capabilities, <coughs> which are named policy, and its actions are evaluated based on reward. The agent task is to maximize the reward received receive based on the action uh, taken. So I will present the basic principles of reinforcement learning using the example of a rover, which task is to climb a step slope. So let's assume that we uh, that the rover receives information about the current rotation angle of the of each servo and has information about the load on a given servo. Rover is uh, rated based on how high he managed to climb and in what time. Based on this, the rover actions are changed in order to achieve the highest possible reward. By using this technique, agents or rover are able to decide based on unstructured input data without the need to manually design the state space model. Of course, this involves creating a simulation that will allow the model to be learned. So there is a lot of work to use reinforcement learning for the movement. <clears throat> for uh, all of this model, there is a big need for computational power. So. I have chosen two possible solutions. One of them is uh, SOM, System on Model with AI Accelerator, or a, a, um, Tensor Processing Unit. SOM uses uh, both multi-core processors and uh, tensor cores. And uh, what is the difference between a uh, simple processor and a tensor cores? Tensor cores are able to perform many operations per clock cycle, but have less accuracy than standard processors. <clears throat> and uh, the main difference between SOMs and TPU is that in order to infer on a TPU, the mo model must be uh, properly designed and converted due to, due to uh, architecture of TPU. And uh, TPU requires additional hardware for example, uh, some kind of mini PC to transmit data to it. In addition, uh, it is possible to connect server uh, TPUs to a single mini PC, which seems a rather tempting option. So the TPU's solution looks quite promising. <clears throat> so uh, in the future, the rover's uh, movement will be based on various types of machine learning. One possible application is an artificial neural network model for segmented rocks to avoid them during the crawl maneuver. <clears throat> the crawling motion can be uh, optimized or improved by using reinforcement learning algorithm to select the optimal hitch point. <coughs> so, uh, as you can see at uh, the image uh, 18, there is actually a scan. A 3D scan based on a depth camera of the test bed. And through the use of a deep camera, the rover can, let's say, understand the surface on which it's moving. In addition, through the use of this type of camera, it is possible to determine the real position of the robot limbs by using an appropriate model to detect key points. So as you can see, at this uh, over visualization, uh, some key points at the arms of the robot can be possibly can be actually I didn't check it, but I think it's possible to estimate uh, points uh, key points to um, give a robot additional information about its reposition, and based on this. 
uh, Robert can get um, more data about what is uh, actually going on when it's a uh, crawl. Uh, as you can see, the plates also can be maybe can be segmented to check how deep they are uh, digging to make actually a proper movement and uh, make sure that rover do the optimal um, movement of the arm. Uh, so I was uh, I was talking about uh, EMU data and detecting uh, a sudden uh, slide down a slope. So I think based on my uh, previous uh, research, uh, I can assume that uh, artificial neural networks model, which are based on attached mechanisms, are able to recognize events based on the EMU data. And uh, for this detection of this event, uh, I want to use some kind of attached mechanism and especially uh, uh, self attention to find the let's let's say it a uh, correlation between um, samples in in uh, time series to classify when a rover actually slides down a slope and uh, so uh, the rover can take an appropriate action to actually uh, stop sliding and, yeah. and this is it so <clears throat> to sum up uh, for the uh, in the close uh, future, I'm going to test the ability uh, of the rover to climb on different type of slope. And for the improvement, I'm going to use a servo that, uh, that have uh, 360 degree rotation capabilities with two way communication and uh, that have uh, ability to determine the occurrence of load on the servo. I also want to optimize the crawling motion and prepare a suitable wheel project. So that's all for my uh, presentation. Thank you for your time and attention. Excellent. Powell, um, thanks. Also, myself, I found it uh, very interesting and impressive the way to, let's say, do the real-time image processing to uh to detect the motions to detect the motion state of the the lever arms uh or controlling the mobility modes um, nice nice uh we do have obviously we now having a q and a portion and uh, george mason george you put something in the chat uh do you know what the training data will look like for the artificial neural network uh power if you want to Take the question, perhaps. Uh, yes, the data will be, and the data actually always is the most tedious part because I will need a lot of. Uh, for example, let's uh, let's focus on a key point detection. I will need actually uh, photos from the rover with different configuration of the arms, and also I will need a use of, let's say, a different environments when I take these photos. So uh, the neural networks model will have a better on this understanding of arms and will be and have and the model will have a better generalization capabilities. For, um, uh, for example, in the case of, uh, let's say, uh, this emu data to recognize some events, actually, we'll need to make a, a real, let's say, uh station to uh collect this data and i want to use mm, uh, emu uh, informations and i will uh, make some kind of slope and i will actually make the rover slide down so i actually have a uh, markers in the time series that i can use as the, as the data to train 
uh, as positive class. And for the negative, I will use uh, EMU data from standard rubber motion. Okay. George, I, I hope that uh, answers your your comment. You are responding to us in the chat. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, we can also allow for uh, we can also allow the audience to speak uh, to uh, uh, to the meeting if necessary. So let let us know in the chat if you want to be brought on stage, as it's called. Um, Varsha, any questions from you? I guess I'm just more curious about the ML side. Um, that's not my area at all of expertise. So I just like to know more about that. And I guess more more than that, like what, what do you think is the most um, challenging part that you're going to face, um, you know, in, in rovers like this? What What is, the according to you, the most challenging part? So I guess something a little bit on your experience. Actually, the uh, most challenging part is the beginning so uh, the first design first tests when you actually don't know if this event start to work and if everything's go well so it's a, a kind of a most challenging part but i also think in my um research plan let me show it again Here it is. <clears throat> so uh, mechanical design can be a bit of a tough part, actually. But at the end, this is there is a use of this uh, kind of AI. So um, I think it is the toughest part because everything needs to be perfectly uh, planned before. So electrical design and mechanical design must be actually uh, done properly and later based on this information i will need to create a simulation for reinforcement learning and i think uh, like taking this simulation could be very hard because i have to use a lot of uh, equation to determine the behavior of the soil and the movement of the rover so it can adapt to the environment and after this, uh, after this simulation, the creating a, a reinforcement learning model, the real test will be also hard because uh, it's actually unknown if the rover with the information from simulation can actually work in a real world. So I think AI part is most challenging. It will be. Power, I know that. And, and uh i i saw also in your write up of future planned activities that the wheel design as such is going to be a task that that will be coming up next right yes. because i i noted from from what we see in your in the design of the current prototype the wheels seem rather small uh, so probably too small for the soil conditions and the weight of of the robot and um so okay so this this is going to be an upcoming activity, right? Right. And uh, I think if I make the uh, different design of the wheel, most probably they will be bigger. So I actually have to create some different kind of crawling mechanism because this one is actually small too. So yeah, there's a lot of work with. That's what I was just thinking. So if the wheels grow in size uh, for for these reasons, then uh, geometrically you may be uh, getting a problem with the, the physical sizes yeah. of uh, of the suspension arms, basically. Um, will you actually, Pavel, um, continue to work on this yourself? Because you've changed department, as I understand, and you um in a different domain now um so will somebody else take on this work uh in Lublin or will it be yourself to some percentage now, of time can you comment on that yes for now I'm doing it by myself 
Good, good. Um, other questions, comments? George? Oh, Yaroslav is typing. Okay, good. Now, of course, the Lublin team, we should mention that too. Um, so the, the university that Powell um, is with, his affiliation, they hosted last year's ISTVS conference uh, in October, and we all enjoyed uh, the event. So thanks again. And, and some of the team are attending today. So David uh, and uh, Jaroslav as well. Um, there's a question, yes, by Jaroslav. Um, Varsha, do you want to read the Jaroslav's question? Yes. Professor Pitka is asking about the use of active suspension for the rover, which I think is a really interesting future works. Any comments on that? Uh, for now, I'm actually <clears throat> want to focus on the uh, the crawling mechanism and uh, wheel uh, design and uh, transit kit to actually works uh, with uh, the rover. I want to create for now a rover that can uh, use a wheel actually and uh, optimize the crawling mechanism for new wheels. So I'm focusing on it right now. Wow, okay, okay. <laughs> I would actually interpret what we're seeing there i would already interpret that as active suspension is it not um so let's say the the physical the structural elements that support the wheels they are actively articulated um so that in itself can be referred to as active suspension already i may be wrong but uh, that's my we, we in robotics in, in field robotics and also in planetary rovers even and lunar rovers we're seeing this um being introduced um, in several projects um are there plans to submit some of this work to uh, either the Journal of Terra Mechanics, Powell, or to uh, this year's uh, meeting, ISTVS conference? Uh, I actually already submitted it to ISTVS. A, qu a, quick, a quick question. George. Uh, did, did you use rapid prototyping for uh, building these components of the vehicle? Excuse me, could you repeat? Because I did it here. How did you How did you build the vehicle itself? The little little test vehicle you were using. Uh, actually, I firstly I uh, designed every part, uh, and, and then first I find the uh, the, uh, the proper servers to maintain the weight. And uh, when I found this uh, type of server, I use a uh, CAD software to uh, project uh, arms and uh, the whole element of the robot, rover. So, yeah, that was the way to design it. Any, any rapid prototyping as far as uh, is it, uh, a 3D printer? Okay. Yes, yes. The prototype is uh, fully uh, 3D printed. Right. It looks good. It looks good. Thank you. Great. Uh, more questions? More remarks? No, I'm glad you're bringing this forward also to the conference, uh, Pavel. Um, yeah, so that should be a nice contribution. Um, right, so with that, maybe we can lead over to uh, some related announcements. Uh, Pavel, thanks again to you. Thank you. To be able to present uh, to us today. Uh, I'm sure this was a lot of work putting this together, uh, aside from your, let's say, day job uh, these days. 
So it's very much appreciated. Also, uh, thanks to uh, Jaroslav, um, I think your advisor for the PhD uh, last year. Um, right, so we are having a few announcements to make uh, for, let's say, the next uh, DES event. Um, Farsha, we have a slide, right? Or Jenna? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Varsha, if you want to speak to this. Yep. So I guess this brings us to around the end of our event. And uh, again, here we are here to um, thank the speakers. And along with that, if you're interested in events like this, we would love you um, to also join our society because we do keep doing out um, events like this. So I'm just going to send that link over. Um, join our society. We um, have, do keep in contact whenever, you know, we don't have any, um, I, I guess, conferences going on. Uh, we have a lot on the site. Um, the previous DES events also have all been compiled into, I guess, like a playlist that you can access on YouTube. So go check that out too. Um, we have speakers from 2022, actually. So a lot, a lot of amazing talks by different students and professors from all over the world, I guess. And th that's the idea to really spotlight uh, different researchers. Um, we also, as uh, Professor Junya said, um, the call for proposals is open. I did send out a link for that previously. So if everybody would could take a look at that with the dates, because a few of them are really coming up. Um, March 15th for the abstract deadline. I need to get to it. So I'm, I'm sure many of us probably have to kind of figure, um, you know, finish off that. So yes, uh, the call for proposals, if you everybody could take a look at those dates and probably, you know, get get together or act before we get, get to Japan and um, by, you know, by the end of this year, really excited for that. And um, at the end, I guess um, we do want to advertise the next session that is coming up uh, by Mohit Nitin Shenvi. Well, I should say Dr. Mohit Nitin Shenvi. He just got his um, PhD from Virginia Tech, and he will be here to um, present on his uh, theses. He does a lot of studies on compacted snow, um, a lot of testing methodologies. Um, also involved with the industry to give us more insight of how winter tire testing happens. So um, I would love for you guys to go check out uh, the web page on that. Uh, we have the event uh, to, on 20th March. So it is, it is in March um, around 9 a.m. in uh, New York time. So, um, you know, go, go check that out. Please register. We also have other events coming up after that from Professor Dan Negrut on Project Chrono. We also um, have another event um, coming up after that by Professor Christopher Gooden. So all that is on our website. Please do check it out. Um, so we have a good series lined up for, for you guys. Um, also, I would like to ask if anybody's interested in uh, nominating anybody for these type of seminars, please do go ahead. You can even self-nominate too. Get in touch with us and we'll be more than happy to have a session with you. Um, that's it from my side. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Um, Dr. Lutz, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, no, I just uh, would like to echo what you just said, uh, Varsha. So it's, it's been great uh, doing the second. Uh, event this year already so we we decided uh, some months ago that we would this year be having a rather dense pace of uh, this type of uh, online uh, these webinars basically and uh, yes so next one again yeah just two weeks away from from today today and uh, yes so please consider joining and consider joining the ISTVS Society and consider preparing an abstract, submitting it for the upcoming Japan conference later this year. Yep. Thanks very much. Uh, that, uh, yes. So uh, thanks to all 
to everybody that uh, have contributed to preparing it, also to our speaker, Pavel. Thank you. And uh, we speak next time. And uh, yes, uh, Junia, enjoy the evening. Thanks for staying with us during okay. the event uh, today. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Bye. Everybody have a great day. Bye. Have a great day.